Hi, my name is Magdalena. I'm from Forschungszentrum Jülich and I would like to present to you a recent study about modeling the impact of biopores on root growth and root water uptake that I conducted with my colleagues also from Jülich as well as from the universities of Kassel, Bonn and Berlin. So first of all, what are biopores? They are voids in the soil created either by earthworms or decaying plant roots and they are important because roots can use them to penetrate compact soil layers and to gain access to subsoil water resources. What we wanted to do in the study was to combine extensive experimental field data with a model in order to give explanations for interactions between root growth in biopores and root water uptake and secondly to test the impact of biopores on root growth and root water uptake under different soil physical conditions. So the model we used was the RSWIMS model. RSWIMS combines a root growth model with a soil water flow model and a root water uptake model. Combining means that the root growth is influenced by the soil moisture conditions. For the root water uptake, the transpiration demand is set at the root color and depends on the atmospheric conditions. For our study, we additionally had to implement the impact of biopores into our swims. For that, we used a recently developed model that takes into account the impact of biopores on the root growth rate as well as on the root growth direction. And additionally, we implemented the impact of biopores on root water uptake into our swims. So basically what we did was we simulated the growth and water uptake of a single wheat root system in soil with biopores in three dimensions over a whole cropping period from April to end of July. Uh, we set up different simulation scenarios that take into account the different soil physical conditions. So first of all, since we wanted to evaluate the impact of biopores, we did scenarios with and without biopores. Secondly, for the root water uptake, we took into account limited as well as unlimited root water uptake in biopores. The limited root water uptake means that if a root is located in a biopore, only a part of the root surface is in contact with the biopore wall. Thus, a root will take up less water. In the second case of unlimited root water uptake, we assume that a root that is located in a biopore can take up just as much water as it would if it was located in a bulk soil. Additionally, we took into account two scenarios of subsoil bulk density, either low or high. In the graph on the left, you can see the impact of biopores on maximum rooting depth as well as root length density. What you can see is that biopores increase both maximum rooting depth as well as root length density. In general, both maximum rooting depth and root length density were lower in more compact soil, which is clear because of the increased soil penetration resistance. And limited or unlimited root water uptake did not have any influence on maximum rooting depth or root length density. In the graph on the right side, you can see the impact of biopores on the accumulated root water uptake. Now, in the first part of the graph until mid-June, no stress occurs, thus the potential root water uptake rate is met. Afterwards, uh, there is the stress onset and um, transpiration demands can no longer be met. What you can see is that in the scenarios with biopores, uh, higher transpiration occurs, which is, of course, very positive. If we look at that more closely, what we can see is that the impact of biopores on the cumulative root water uptake is greater for dense than for loose soil. Now this is because also the relative increase in maximum rooting depth as well as root length density was greater for more compact than for loose soil. And secondly, the impact of limited root soil contact in biopores on root water uptake is only small. Now this is because actually not the root hydraulic conductivity was the limiting factor, but much more the limited soil water availability. Now these results are interesting in general, but they can also be very useful for larger scale simulations in 1D crop models 
that can only take into account the impact of biobores on root growth and root water uptake implicitly. So if you are further interested in this study, I would invite you to read the paper. And anyway, thanks a lot for watching.